Hello! Today I'm going to do a demo for creating the universal joint using Onshape. Uh, here's a little animated GIF of what we will be making eventually, and uh, it should be pretty fun. Alright, here we go. So, starting here, um, I have a new part um, that I created, and we're going to get started here. Um, by starting with a sketch and on the front plane I'm gonna switch the view cube to the front and I'm going to start with just a regular cube here and I don't really care so much about the initial dimensions of the of the square that I made because I'm gonna use the dimension tool in order to get it into the proper size that it needs to be and this is going to be something that I do a lot throughout the video with all of these parts is loosely putting in shapes or putting things in places where it's close enough and then using the dimension tool to place it uh, properly which is a great feature of Onshape here and so the dimensions I'm going to go with are um, let's see I gotta redo the math here should be 3.25 that across the top and the width is going to be 3.5 and when you're done with a sketch click on the green check mark I'm going to go into my isometric view and extrude this to give it the thickness using the first tool here which is extrude so I'm clicking on this tool clicking on this face and then I know the thickness is one and a half inches 1.5 which you put in the depth here I like to click enter when I'm done with the dimension and click check mark to get it now I have a cube in this shape which I'm going to use to start forming um, the overall shape so the next thing I need to do is add in um, some curves which I realize now it'd be easier to keep this and flip back and forth. This is the shape that I'm making. I'm going to add in these curves which have a radius of one. In order to do that I am using the fillet tool right here. Looks like a, a little cube with a curved edge to it. Click on that and like I said the radius is one. So one enter and then it needs to be here and here. And when you're done with that green check mark. Okay, so I am ignoring this bump out and I just made this shape here because in my mind it's just easier to work that way. Next thing I'm going to do is cut out this piece here. And the way to do that is sketch, choose the plane that you're going to work on, which I'm going to use this front plane of the fork and I'm just going to make a rectangle like this and add the dimensions now so I can place it. And as you can see, it's one and a half inches wide here and it's one inches from the outside edge. In order to do that, I'm going to click here on this edge and click on this edge and drag to the left and change this to one inch. So now my cube is from here to here one inches away. I know this gap needs to be one and a half inches and I will measure this right here and change it to 1.5 and just to double check I'll click on this line and then this line and that should be one inch which it is. Check mark to finish it and I'm going to go back into this view and now I'm going to cut the hole out to create the fork shape and this is a negative extrude or removing the ex a remove extrude and click extrude change this setting to remove and then you can see right now it's only going part of the way through because the depth is one inch but I want it to go all the way through and the easiest way to do that is where it says blind there's a lot of options here for your extrusion I'm going to use through all which means it's just going to go all the way through the shape and you can see it's cut completely through check mark to finish it and now I have most of this done 
The next thing I'm going to do is add this extrusion here, this little bump out. And so sketch, and I'm going to click on this face here and go into the right view. And I'm just going to use a square and just, or the rectangle shape and just make it in there. Again, I'm going to use the dimension tool to put it in place and make sure everything matches. I know that <clears throat> the top and bottom lines from here, from the top of the extrusion to the top of the fork, this dimension needs to be one and a quarter. And I know that f the length of the bump out needs to be one inches. And then from here to the bottom, it should also be one and a quarter, which it is. So I know everything's looking good. Check mark to finish that sketch. Oops, why isn't it switching? There we go. And now I'm going to extrude this out, extrude, and that distance is 0.5 inches, and finish. So I have done this shape so far. The next part in the fork is to start adding some of the curves here to the front. And here are the dimensions for it. Um, the radius of this curve is 0.75. And it's important to know that the curve is not going to be shown if you look at the front. So the curve is going to be on these edges here. So in this view, once I curve them, you won't see the curve. It can be a little bit tricky to figure this out because I had trouble doing this. And I know some students had trouble doing this as well. but. Uh, I'm going to make this large curve, which is a radius of 0.75. And again, I'm using the fillet tool. I'm going to change this to 0.75 and hit enter. And then it's the top and bottom here. Just kidding. See, I knew I was going to mess it up. It's this one and this one. Because like I said, from the front, you shouldn't see the curve. So see, if I'm back in the front, you don't see the curve. The curve is from this way, from the top. All right. The next step is to add this hole. And if you look in this view over here, you can see that the hole goes all the way through the shape. It's also 7 16 of an inch. I'm going to go to the top view, sketch, select this plane on the top, and I'm going to make this circle in here and it's 7 16 so with the dimension tool selected I'm gonna click on the circle click out here and you can do 7 divided by 16 if you don't know the decimal for it to create the correct digit or the correct dimension and it is the center of that circle is 0.75 from the edge here and also 0.75 from the top edge so with dimension, I'm going to click on the center point of the circle and the top line. And this needs to be 0.75. And from the center mark of the circle, whoops, from the center mark of the circle to the edge out here, this also needs to be 0.75. So using these two dimensions, that centers the circle where it needs to be. And when you're done with the sketch, the green check mark. Now I need to extrude all the way through and create this hole right here. In order to do that, I am going to select the face of the circle that I just made, use the extrude tool, and again, I need to use remove to remove all of that. So if I switch from add to remove, now it goes this far. I currently only have it set to one inch. If I change the blind to through all, it will now go all the way through. That's the easiest way to get it to go all the way through. Hit check mark when you're done. So now I'm good. It's looking pretty good. All right. The next thing that needs to be added is um, the uh, little stick part 
that sticks out of the fork here and um, it's shown here using a center line so that you can center the um, this extrusion in the middle of that plane and the way to create that is you sketch and click on this plane and then there's a line right here when in the drawing so far we've only used a rectangle and a circle the very first tool is a line and then I want it to be like a center line or a dimension line and the way to use that is this thing right here it's called construction the hotkey is Q if you prefer hotkeys and when you do that it changes the line to a construction line like you see here all right and what that means is it's not creating a shape it's just creating um, a note essentially for you and now if I go to the circle tool when I move it around here you'll see there's a little icon that pops up right here and that icon is saying that it snapped to the center of that line and since the line is going across from uh, one corner to the other the center of that line is going to be the center of that plane I will click and drag there to create the circle and then I know from this dimension that the circle is 0.375 using the dimension tool 0.375 I know that this is in the correct place I'm gonna switch views check mark to put check mark to finish that circle the sketch and now I need to click it so that I have the face selected in order to extrude it out and this extrusion extrusion I believe is five inches which it is and the check mark to finish it and so now I have the fork completed all right that is all you need to do for the fork. A little tricky with these front curves, but um, as long as you get them in the right way to where they're curved from the top and not from the side, then you should be good. Over here, I am going to right click on part one and rename this fork. That way I know what it is. The next part that needs to be made is the center joint which looks like this. It's a cube with four um, pegs coming off of it. In order to make this and make it a little bit easier on myself, I'm going to click on the plus sign way down in the bottom left here. The uh, pop-up tooltip says insert new element. And when I click that, I want to make a new part studio. And now along the bottom here, I have part studio one, which is the fork. I have part studio two, which is going to be um, the center joint, which looks right here, looks like this right here. <clears throat> and to begin this, I will use a sketch and select the front plane and use the rectangle tool and dimension this. This rectangle is one and a half inches cubed. So that means this dimension needs to be 1.5 the side dimension needs to be 1.5 finish this sketch by clicking on the green arrow and now we need to extrude it and that distance also needs to be 1.5 all right so you should get a cube that is one and a half inches all the way around looking at this cube all of the pegs are around the same axis so you just have to make sure when you make these that they're all in the same um, place and they are um, centered here on the on the faces and so one of the easiest ways to do that is to use the centerline trick like we did with the last one so I'm gonna make mine this way I'm gonna do all of my posts on this face. Um, I'll do a sketch, click this plane, click on line because I'm going to draw a line and then click on construction because I want it to be a construction line. Hit escape to get out of that and now I need to make a circle 
and the peg is three h three eighths of an inch. So I'm mousing over until I find the center line. Oops, I clicked on the wrong circle. There we go. Okay, find the center, click and drag. Use the dimension tool to make sure that this is three eighths of an inch and finish that sketch. And now we have to do this four or three more times. All right, so I'm going to the top view, sketch, top plane. I'm going to use a line, make it a construction line, and go from one corner to the other, hit escape, use the circle and find that center point again, drag it out, use the dimension tool, and dimension this so that it's 3 eighths of an inch. And finish the sketch. Go back into isometric mode and make sure I'm going the right way. So I need to go over here to the right view, sketch on the right one, <coughs> choose line, make it a construction line, draw it from corner to corner and hit escape, select the circle, find the center point, use the dimension tool, oh boy, use the dimension tool to make sure that this is three-eighths of an inch, and finish the sketch, and I should have one more left, which is going to be down here on the bottom. So sketch, choose the bottom face, make a line, make it a construction line, make it from corner to corner, hit escape, select the circle, find that center point, make your circle, and then dimension it 3 eighths of an inch. Finish the sketch. Now I have four circles drawn. I should be able to extrude all of them, uh, but not at once. So if I select this, let's see, they need to be one and a quarter inches high, or they need to stick out one and a quarter inches. I'm going to start right here, extrude 1.25, check mark to finish. Next face, extrude 1.25, hit enter, check mark to finish. Select this face, extrude, 1.25, hit enter, check mark, and then the last one, extrude, 1.25, hit enter, check mark to finish. All right, now I feel like my views are all over the place, but it's pretty good. I got most of it done. The last thing that I need to do, I think, is to add in this eighth inch edge. And if you notice, the eighth inch fillet needs to go all around every corner of the main cube. And in order to do that, <clears throat> choose fillet, and it needs to be one eighth, and hit enter. And then you can just go through, and what's nice is you can click on all of these in one um, at one time without having to do each one and then click the check mark which would be really annoying so I think I'm I think I got them all now once you have all of the edges filleted you can hit the check mark and you should be good and I believe that is all you need to do for the center joint. I'm going to take this part, right click, and rename this one center joint. Because we're going to put all of these together in an assembly later, and they should be uh, easy, easier to figure out what part it is if I name them. Now the last one is the frame. All right, and it looks like this. In order to make the frame, what I need to do is um, make a new part studio down at the bottom click the plus which is insert a new element 
create part studio and that will give me another empty space to start working in before you do something so the other shapes I feel like were pretty simple although the fork you know I had to think about it a little bit ahead of time and using what I know figure out what was going to be the easiest way to make this so the dimensions that I'm given here are a top kind of front view of this uh, this is a another this is like a top angled front view looking at it this way this one is looking at it front this way and then this is a side view and so um, the way I'm gonna make this one is by drawing this angled shape here using lines alright and so um, I found that it works this is like for me the best way to do it if you have another way that you like to draw it you can do it that way but I'm going to draw this shape first so I'm gonna click sketch and I'm gonna click front change to the front view and I'm going to use the line tool but I'm not changing it to construction because I want this to eventually be a shape now what I'm going to do is just roughly create this the shape this profile shape right here by clicking with the lines so I'll make the long bottom here and it should snap into you know specific things here there's a little line icon that shows up which means that it is straight across and um, it does the same thing here so I need to go up here a little bit over down straight across and then this part is like a weird back angle and you can see that the icon that's popping up here which you might not be able to see it might be too small is a perpendicular icon showing that this line is perpendicular to the angled one and then I'm going to go down to here and finish it off alright so now this is done now I'm gonna go in and dimension it and when you look this bottom space is 15 and a half inches so I know it's gonna end up being really big because right now it's only four and a half inches so if I type in 15 and a half and hit enter it's gonna scale everything up really big and you just have to zoom out um, I'm using the scroll wheel to zoom in and out and then in order to finish dimensioning this I'm going to go counterclockwise just because that's the way I feel like doing it. Um, the next dimension is six and a half inches over here. The top here is one and a half inches. This over here is five inches. And again, I'm using the um, dimension tool to just go through and dimension all of my known dimensions. And then the shape is reshaping itself to fit those dimensions the next one is 60 degrees so from this line to this line it needs to be 60 degrees and just to show you how that works again in order to get uh, degrees so I'm going to create this dimension here 60 degrees click one line and see it's trying to dimension that length there but when I mouse over the other line it turns orange so I can click on that and now it want, it's telling me to dimension it which it needs to be 60 degrees the next dimension is up here which is uh, one and a half one point whoops accidentally hit entered 1.5 this dimension is 12 inches all right. so we're pretty close the only one that's off is right here and in order to get this dimension what I can do is um, I know that this whole height is six and a half inches and then this height from here to here is five inches so if I subtract the five inches from the six and a half I get an inch and a half which is should be this space in here so when I click on this to dimension it whoops I need to be in the dimension tool this should be 1.5 and now I have done all of the dimensions for this side view to create this shape I can finish this sketch and go back to the isometric view and now I need to extrude it these images don't really give the full width of this 
from here from this center line to the edge is one and three quarters from this one it also says one and three quarters so in order to get the full width you have to double one and three quarters which um, should be th three and a half I'm gonna have to do this math hold on one second yeah three and a half and so I'm going to go to extrude wait nope I got it okay extrude and it should be 3.5 inches wide and check mark all right so I'm pretty good the the last things I need to add is there's a hole through here and there's a hole through here and so I'll do the back one first so I'm going to whoops just switch around over here to this view and sketch on this plane and I'm just gonna make a hole like this and then or a circle and then dimension it which the dimension of it needs to be 7 16 all right now in order to place it if you look I am doing using this drawing here it needs to be three quarters of an inch from the top of this back space and then it needs to be one and three quarters of an inch from the side so I need to use the dimension tool from the center to the top of this line this should be three quarters so 0.75 and then from the center whoops from the from the center to this line that should be one and three quarters so 1.75 and now this line is or the circles in the right place and it's ready for me to um, extrude through so I need to click on the face extrude and remove now whoops now I don't want to do through all because it'll put a hole through this part which we don't want we just want it to go through that space there which we know is one and a half inches so you can do 1.5 inches and now you can see it goes through check mark to finish that hole the next one we need to do is put the hole that goes through up here so I'm going to do sketch and click on that plane and then um, there's no like automatic angle that's 60 degrees so I'm just gonna have to make this hole from um, a kind of perspective -y isometric angle so I've already selected uh, this face I need to make a circle in here and this circle also needs to be um, 7 16 now the dimensions for this one is over here it's three inches from the top edge and then again one and three quarters inch in from the side so let me zoom in from the center to up here this dimension should be three inches and then from the center point to the side that dimension should be one and three quarters or 1.75 now that's in the right place finish the sketch and make the hole extrude remove and this is also one and a half inches thick so 1.5 the hole goes through hit the check mark and now in isometric view I have the frame done last thing I'm going to do is rename the part to frame so now I have all three of these parts on tabs I have the fork I have the um, center joint and I have the frame alright now that we've made all of our three parts here what I'm going to do is we need to put them into the fourth tab that we have now which is the assembly and in order to do that you have to use insert up here so when you click insert notice that the parts show up there because um, Onshape is recognizing that you already made these so I'm gonna click on the frame I'm gonna click on the center joint 
and then we need one fork and we need two forks. So I have the, the four parts we need. When you're done, click on the green check mark, and then I'm going to click on these and use the handles to just move them out of the way of each other, which makes it easier to work with. All right, so this is what I have. First thing we're going to do is use the constraints, which are all of these things that are up here at the top, to put the forks into the frame. I'm going to use for this the cylindrical constraint. When you click on it, what I'm going to do is click the middle so that this snaps to the middle of the rod. And then I'm going to click on the inside of that. I know it's in the right place. I'm going to click the check mark in the upper left box. I know two boxes show up, but just click the one up here. And now if I move this, it moves in and out. And I'm just going to move that so that it's um, a little bit more out of the way. To put the second fork where it belongs, I'm going to click on cylindrical mate again. Click in the middle of that fork and then the inside of the other hole. Now notice that when I do that, the fork is going the wrong direction. There's a black arrow right here that says flip primary axis. If you click that, it flips it back and forth. So just flip it so that the fork is going the correct way and hit the green arrowhead. And again, I'm going to use the um, manipulator handles to just move it up out of the way. Now I know I need this, the forks to be at opposite um, angles. So I'm going to use this outer thing. It's like a circle with a curved line. If I click and drag that, I can rotate the fork. And now let's just reset the, the view here. Now the forks are opposite, which makes it way easier to get the um, center joint where it needs to go. All right, the center joint is going to use a different constraint. What the, this is going to use the revolute which is with this one right here. So the first one we used is the uh, cylindrical mate, which allows it to spin and move um, in and out. The revolute mate only allows it to spin around to revolve. So I'm going to click that. I'm going to click where the rod meets the uh, cube. And then I'm going to click on the inside of the fork. That way, when I finish this, um, it mates them in the right spot because you want the rod of where it meets the cube to be inside the fork. And then I'm going to hit the check mark to finish that. And then again, I need to do a revolute mate. Click where the one of the open rods meets the base and then click the inside of the other fork and now it moves it, that's okay. When you hit the check mark, it will put them together. All right, so I know it might, oh man, I got my views all mixed up here. So when you originally do it, do the um, second, I'm just gonna do this. This is just great. There we go. So when you get the original, what the? 